We're standing before Calvary, uh, Gordon's Calvary, the Calvary that the Bible speaks of that looked like a skull. You can still see the indentations like the eyes and the protrusion like a nose, and it features Calvary uh, very strong. And telling you about the 36 miracles in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, possibly the greatest of these is his own resurrection from the dead. <laughs> a miracle that was inside himself personally rather than in others. In this magnificent series, uh, we are showing you the physical miracles that he performed, and then the miracles that related to nature that he performed, and then the miracles uh, with the casting out of evil spirits uh, from, from people, and uh, which was a very a very, a very wonderful uh, power of God demonstrated for human beings. And then uh, the, the miracles of the raising of the dead, and which he was one of these. And so uh, we, we always begin here. This is where he uh, gave his life to save the entire human race. On, on this hilltop between uh, two, two thieves, and no doubt people standing by multitudes into this area here could see where the Son of God came to be the Son of Man, that He might create within us the strength and the power to become the sons of God. And so it is a, it may be the most important spot on the face of this earth, is to see the place where the Savior of mankind made Himself a sacrifice. And this was His altar that you're looking at right now. And we want to proceed with you into this th thrilling aspect of divinity and of the power of God uh, for you and for me in this hour of history in which we live. More to come. In the teaching syllabus, the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, maybe the most amazing of them all is the resurrection of the dead. And so we're going to give uh, some time uh, to show you the various ones who were raised from the dead. They, they, they had expired and new life came back into them through the power of God. And we think the greatest of these, of course, is the Lord Jesus Himself. That though He had been dead for three days, the power of the Almighty God returned back into His being and He demonstrated Himself, not in His human aspect as He had for the 33 years, but in His resurrected body He came back. And it's so interesting that hewn out of the side of Mount Calvary is the tomb, that the place where the Lord Jesus Christ lay, His body lay for those three days. Uh, it's right in the very heart of the mountain. And so we, were, we will take you uh, from Mount Calvary where he became the Lamb of God, the sacrifice for the total human race, and take you to the place where the Lord Jesus Christ stepped triumphantly out of the door of a tomb. He was conqueror. Satan's head had been bruised, and now the, the master of masters stepped forth to say, I am the resurrection and the life. All power in heaven and earth is granted unto me. And in Acts 1 and 8, he says, and you shall receive power, same word, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And we, we know that that ho same Holy Spirit is available to those who love him and serve him as of this day and of, and of this hour. So I want you to come with me and let us go to the garden tomb where the Master made the Resurrection Day a reality. It is possible that the three darkest days in history were the three days when Jesus' body was inside this tomb. The day after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene and a couple of other Marys, before it was light, found their way through the dreary streets of old Jerusalem, looking for the garden. They had brought some spices with them to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Upon their arrival, the stone had been rolled away. All around were Roman soldiers lying as dead men. Can't you see Mary <laughs> stepping on that one? stepping on this one, getting closer to the door all the time. And I can hear her say, 
this is where you should have been all the time, my foot on top of you, because what I believe in will last so much longer than what you believe in. It says, I believe in the might and the power of the Son of God, born of a virgin, walked among men, fed the hungry, cast out devils, healed the sick. And so he did die on Calvary, but he will rise again. And she came into this area. They're just ladies, you know. It wasn't bravery, it was daring inside of them. They could have been apprehended, of course, but before the sun rose over that Moab, Moabite hill over there, here came the ladies to this tomb, and they saw the stone rolled away, and they looked inside, and he had risen from the dead. That was the day they saw an angel, but it wasn't an angel they were looking for. Some of you are possibly looking for angels, but they were not looking for angels at all. They were looking for a lover. They were looking for the one that had taken away their sins, had taken away their heartaches, that had taken away their problems and sorrows, and had made them to be new persons upon the face of this earth. They were looking for a lover. And so they found it empty. They saw an angel. The angel had good news. He is not here. He is risen as he said. Then they saw the Lord Jesus, and he said, go and tell my disciples. It has been an amazement to some that the first resurrection sermon was preached by a lady. That, that Why didn't God use a man, you know? Well, he would have. He wanted to, except the Bible also says that they were hidden in a room that was locked for fear of the Jews. God can't do much for you hidden in a room locked with fear. You know, you're just about taking yourself out of the mighty thrust of the Almighty when that type of spirit comes upon you. But these went and took it away. They said, listen, he's risen. I've seen the place, and the Lord is not there. He is risen. What a mighty message it was to the human race. Of the greatest miracles ever performed on planet Earth, the raising of the dead, I presume, is the greatest of all miracles. And here we have the Lord Jesus leading the way of saying, in my own person, I demonstrate to you the mighty power of a Jehovah God able to even bring life from the lifeless. And so he came forth, resurrected from here. For 40 days, he saw his disciples. He, he ate with them. He talked with them. He discussed the eternal kingdom with them before he was received up into heaven. What a glorious a wonderful moment it was, dramatic moment, when representatives of all of his teachings came to this place and they said, he is not here, he is risen. When a man like Matthew says he's risen, you better believe it. And when a man like Thomas sees his hands and says he's risen, you better believe it. Every type of personality saw him alive after his crucifixion. And so how glad we are today to know that in our own spirits we are risen. We that were dead in sins and trespasses, according to Ephesians 2, hath he revived. He has brought life unto us. He is still the resurrected master. He is still the one that can speak life into your being. And if you today would trust him, receive him, the miracle that take place, took place coming through this door can take place in your heart and in your life. Because this moment, he is still the one that raises the dead. He is still the one that where there is no life, brings life, and he's ready to bring it into you, your home, your community, your city, your nation, and the world. All powerful is he, ready to bless you and to help you. Won't you today reach out to him and say, no one like you has seen the graves of the kings and a number of nations of the world. The only place I have ever found an empty tomb is in Jerusalem. And how glad we are that the Savior that we serve is not buried here. The, 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 the enemies of his that re related to government were down, and the religion had no more power over him. He had subdued all earthly power, and he himself was alive forevermore. I know that's a very exciting, a very exciting thrill in your own heart, and we want you in all your everyday, everyday living to know that what he was, he is, and what he is, he shall forever be. 
we have some more coming. This story is recorded in John uh, chapter 11, beginning in verse 1 and going through verse uh, 44. All might and all power the Lord Jesus Christ has. I I I presume his greatest miracles were those when he actually raised the dead. And so uh, he got word that his his friend that he loved very much, a family uh, called Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, lived together in the little town of Bethany, just two miles from Jerusalem. And this beloved friend of his fell sick and died. By the time Jesus arrived at this home, he had been dead for four days. And no one there, of course, had any hope, any hope that he would ever Uh, rise from the dead in their time. They said that in the resurrection, he would rise from the dead. They'd already buried him and Jesus went to the tomb. And the Bible says, and the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. I don't think he wept because of Lazarus. He knew what would happen there, but he wept because of the unbelief and those who supposedly understood him and loved him. And so we, we just are so glad that at the, at the door of the tomb, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth from the dead. He had a napkin wrapped around his head. He had grave clothes entwined around him. And Jesus shouted, loose him and let him go. And, and it says there were many that believed upon him that had come out of Jerusalem and from all the neighboring towns around about. And one of the greatest miracles that Jesus ever performed that no doubt took many people to heaven in that time and has been taking people to heaven for the last 2,000 years is that a man that had been dead for four days, his own family says, behold, he stinketh. The Lord can take some very stinking conditions and bring new life, new vitality, and and, and new power into such a situation, and they can live again. How happy we are to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer to all problems. It don't matter how big it is, Jesus Christ is the answer to that problem. Even to bring it in new life, where there is no life, he can bring that life into us. And so what we want you to do is, is to realize that whatever your condition, whatever your need, It doesn't matter with Jesus. He can bring out of that which is nothing, something. He can bring out of that which has no life. He can bring dramatic life. And we want you to enter into that life. And I know you're very happy to be with me in the Holy Land. And we are right now uh, uh, showing you all the beautiful sights and scenes of this whole series of talks directly from Israel. And we just want you to know that the God of Israel is alive today. Whatever Jesus did do, he does do. Whatever he does do, he will do. And we want you to have your faith and your trust in him. (laughs) Lazarus was the most excited man there. When they loosed him and he looked out and saw his sisters, he no doubt embraced them strongly. All of his friends he embraced and all of them were shouting for joy to the hills around about Jerusalem. They were, they, they, they abounded in the joyful praise of the people that here was one of the greatest miracles Jesus ever performed. He brought a man back from the dead after he had been dead for four days, proving without any doubt he was the Son of God, proving that he was the Savior of all mankind, and proving that he cared. He does care, and he cares for every living person on the face of this earth today. He is one that cares, and he's reaching out there to you right now. And he wants to say, this is my opportunity to bring you forth and to speak life into you and to speak blessings into you. Jesus was a miracle person. There are 36 stories in the New Testament of personal uh, miracles performed under his ministry. Also, the Bible says that there are multitudes healed that we have no record of. One of the remarkable ones has to do with the raising of the dead. There were three that were raised from the dead, a girl, a boy, and a man. And he was raised from the dead, so that makes four. Uh, We are 
at, our, at the city of Nain, where a young man was raised from the dead. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, and verse 11, it came to pass the day after that Jesus went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now, when he came night to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of a mother, and, 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 and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when, when the Lord Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto you, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he was delivered to his mother. And there came a fear on all the people, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God hath visited the people. The greatest miracle that can be performed, of course, is the raising of the dead. When there is no life and the Creator grants life again, that is a tremendous miracle. It's very beautiful to see that the Lord Jesus was leading a group of people. There are many towns and villages around, and a great number of them was coming into this town of Nain. And as they came into the gate, at that time the, the town had a gate to it, there are 1,000 people in the town today, and there are no Christians. They're all totally Muslim. But in that day, they must have all been Jews, and so it was a different story. And as he was coming into town, he met a funeral procession, and a young man had died. It does not say how he died. Um, it was a sad story because his mother was a widow, so his father was also dead. She had lost her husband, now she had lost her son, and evidently the only child that she had. So she was in a great state of sorrow. And with the, it says that many people were around her, which means that she had a good standing in the community and was respected in the community. And the Bible says that Jesus had compassion on her not the young man. He, saw com he had compassion on the weeping and the wailing of a person that was such a loser. So he walked over, he stopped the funeral procession and said, just a moment. And he spoke to the young man. He said, young man, arise. And instantly the Bible says he sat up, he was lifted over into the arms of someone and handed back to his mother. My guess would be a, a fellow 11, 12, 13 years old, just, just a little kid. And the mother, her heart leaped for joy. The people began to cry and say, there is a prophet among us. God has visited our people. We're living in a world today that needs miracle. We're living in a time that needs miracle for, for a number of reasons. The world needs to know that God is alive, <laughs> that, God, that God is not some far off person uh, seated upon a seat in the heavenlies, not concerned with planet Earth. <clears throat> we need to have a new relationship with the Almighty, the Creator of the universe. And you can only receive such things through faith. You have to believe that there is a God and that that God is a great God. Now, now Jesus was less than 10 miles from home, and so he wasn't very far away from his home, but here he found tragedy. Sometimes you can find tragedy very near you, maybe in your own home even your own community, that there is tragedy in the world that we live, and how glad we are that there are a few people on planet Earth, possibly in every generation, who does have compassion on those who are sad, those who are sorrowing, those who are troubled, those who have lost something very precious to them, and that we can reach into those kind of lives, and we can bless them. Of the 36 great miracles that Jesus did, in the area that you see right behind me. This is live in Israel being taken just now. And, and you see there the, those, that little town still there, still has the same name that 2,000 years ago. Christ performed one of his major miracles of his total ministry and brought great joy into that, into that city. And as far as we know, that is all it has ever been renowned for. But we are so thankful to God that he reached out 
with the hands of the Savior and said, I will do something for the sorrow of this town. I will raise this boy up into life and give him the days that he should have. We're all promised 70 years. We have a right to 70 years. That's our promise coming from the book of Psalms that we have 70 years and here was some, someone cut short, had not lived out his lifespan, had not proved himself to be the person he could be, and here was a new opportunity that came into his life to be something that he desired to be and wanted to be. And the mother, who with great sorrow in that she had lost a husband already, she had nothing left but a son, and now he was restored to her. What a happy moment. We believe that if Christianity means anything at all, it means a restoration of joy. It means a restoration of peace. It means bringing into our lives something that's lost. A lot of things are lost in this life in which we live, and only one can give you total fulfillment and bring back into your being the things that are lost. And so here's one of the sites that we were determined to come and to tell you about, and that is we're walking through the streets of this city, a great miracle. One, one of these miracles, the, the little girl, she was still in her home. Uh, here was a boy, uh, he was on his way to the cemetery, and Lazarus had been dead for four days. So you can actually see a progression here of his uh, raising the dead. In the home that had not left for the cemetery, en route to the cemetery, and one who had been buried for four days. It didn't matter the limit of time. He is the resurrection and the life. He can be the resurrection in your life. He can be the power. He can be the authority. He can be the peace. He can be what you desire. So let the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and help you and strengthen you. Remember, the Word says He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All that He has done, He does do. All that He does do, He will do. Plant your faith and trust in Him. Don't look at the bigness of the need. Look at the source. And the source has the strength to deliver. So just receive it in your own heart and life. Thank you. And let us go to another one of these magnificent situations where the Lord proves Himself the ruler of nature and, and over demon power and even life after one has been dead. Thank you. When you're talking about the biggest thing in the world, you can, you can feel very finite, looking over into the infinite. And we have told you about literally the Lord Jesus Christ raising people from the dead. And we have taken you to, to, to Bethany, where a, a good friend of the Lord Jesus this is the only one of the raised of the dead that he knew personally. And how beautiful it was to see him after four days raised from the dead. And then we took you to Nain where the Lord Jesus had compassion upon a widow and raised her son uh, from the dead. And that was a very happy experience, you see. And then we took you to the garden tomb where the Lord Jesus himself was raised from the dead by the power of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, is a, an amazing, an amazing experience. And then up in the Galilee area, we have taken you now to Nain, uh, where the Lord Jesus raised from the dead a person, that, that a little boy that was going his way to the cemetery and, and uh, had compassion upon them and raised him from the dead. And so we, we are believing that these messages of the supreme power of the Lord Jesus Christ and of his great compassion upon those who have lost something precious in this life, that it will be very very wonderful to you. But the main thing we want it to be is that you must know that Christ is alive and that He can do today what He has done before. And we believe that in this hour in which we live today, we are going to see manifest the mighty power of a living Savior to the world in which we live today. You can expect dr the dramatic to take place. And I want you to enjoy it and appreciate it. We're so glad that we can dwell upon the mighty miracles of the man called Christ Jesus. 
What a happy experience it is. Thank you.